have a look at another example that I've given you called another crypt. So we load the program up in IDA. IDA loads the program up inside our main function. So this is where the program starts running when we first execute it. So let's run it through for the very first instruction. So click on it and then click run to cursor. And I'm just going to change the windows around a little bit just to make it a bit tidier. And this disassembly here, I'm going to right click and change to graph view. There it is. So remember a little while ago I spoke to you about um, what our stack looks like and how, how we manage our stack, manage our local variables and our parameters to functions. So remember the ESP register and the EBP registers are used to keep track of our stack frame. So the very first few instructions inside our function modify EBP and ESP and they're essentially setting up the stack frame for us. So where the, uh, the bottom of the data for our function is and the any parameters which came to our function. So let me get on to move the address of something called password onto the top of the stack. These square brackets mean the means that ESP stores a memory address. The square brackets mean move this into the memory address pointed to by ESP. So we look at the ESP register, here it is, and we go to it in this hex by pressing B, so BFB51B00. This is the top of our stack just there. We're going to move the address, memory address for our password. So F7, there's the memory address for our password. And you can see I just put it on the top of the stack here, so this is the stack view. So let's go to this memory address. So 804A014. And there's our secret password in memory. Now remember when we spoke about calling conventions, we said that when we've got Linux based programs, they use a calling convention called cdecl, which means they put the parameters to a function on the stack in right to left order. So the far right parameter goes, then the second to right parameter goes, and then finally the first parameter goes, and then we call the function. And then the result of that function is stored, if there is one, is stored in the EAX register. So in this case, we're going to put the address of our password string on the stack. That's the only thing we've done to the stack in terms of putting parameters onto it, so there's only one parameter to this function. So let's step inside of this function now. Here's our first few parameters to set up the st uh, and, and our stack frame. Then we've got a variable, which we're going to put zero into, and then we've got a bit of code here which goes around in a loop. You see this blue line. This code here repeats until some condition is just there, and when this condition matches, we finish the function and go back to where we came from. So we've got this variable here, we're putting zero into it, and just down here we're adding one to it. So it's a loop counter of some kind. So let's rename this to loop counter or loop count. So we're going to move zero into the memory address EBP plus loop count. Well loop count equals minus four. EBP is over here, so let's go to that memory address. So address of memory of EBP minus 4, so BFB51AF8, and it's minus 4, so 4, there we go. So we're going to move 0 into that location, there it is, there's a 0, we're going to jump to the start of our loop, we're going to move the value of our loop counter into the AX register, there it is, we're going to move the the value of our parameter, arg0, so it's the parameter of the function, in this case it's the address of the password. If you're not sure what this is, it's the EBP register plus arg0. arg0 is 8, so it's EBP plus 8. So EBP is that F8, which is there, plus 8, duh, duh, there it is, and that's the memory address for our string, for our secret password earlier. So we're going to move that into the AX register, or rather we're going to add it to the AX register. So we've got our loop counter plus the memory address for our message. So we end up a loop counter with zero, zero plus the memory address for our password, which is the memory address for our password. We're then going to so we've store both of these in the AX register. We're going to take a byte at the AX register, pointed to by the AX register, and we're going to store it in AX. This is the first character for our password. So let's Let's have a look at our password again. So it's 804A014. There it is. So we're going to move H 
into EAX is 48. So there it is. We're going to test whether it's zero. It's not. So we're going to go over here. We're then going to move our loop counter into EAX, which is zero. We're going to move the address of our message. We're going to add the address of our message to our loop counter. That's the address of our message. We're going to move a byte from the message into EDX. There it is. There's our 48. We're going to subtract one from it. That's now 47. And we're going to put the low 8 bits back into memory, so just there, it's 47, and then we're going to add 1 to our loop counter. So you can see it's changed that letter there to G, that one there, 48 to 47. So let's repeat. You should see it changes each letter in turn. And when it comes to the last one, we load the loop counter, which is 6. Followed by, the, and we add the address of our message, so that's our password plus six bytes. We move the value of it into the AX register, which is zero, and then we test to see if it's zero to mark the end of the string. Yes, it is, and then we finish our function. So we now go back to here. We've got our password, our password is decrypted. And if you see down, we're now going to be calling printf to print stuff out. So here we're going to load two parameters onto the stack. So in right to left order, the password goes in the far right. And then we have the format string, which in this case is password is percent s. You see it goes from there into the AX and then from the EAX into the onto the stack. So we're going to print that out. Jump over printf. And there we go. Password is Gareth. And that's how you solve that particular one. So just to, just to remind you, it's this line here subtracts one from the ASCII value for each single byte inside the thing. If you don't want to go through it line by line, you don't need to. Let's run our program again, and we're not, we won't run it through line by line. So run through to this point, the start of our main function. We know the password is being given to the decrypt function. So there's the address for it just there on the top of the stack, just before we call the uh, decrypt function. So go to it, 804A014. There's our secret password. And we'll press F8 to skip over this function, rather than going through it line by line. You see there it is, changes to Gareth straight away, it's decrypted it for us.